All right, so we're into um, the next round of our picture books for our Elite Eight, and it's Groundhog's Gotta Say and Boo. So they're both about holidays, but they're kind of fun. So I'll start with Groundhog's Day, uh, Groundhog's Gotta Say, and then I will move into Boo, and then you can vote in the comment boxes below so that way we can see which one moves on to our Elite Eight. So Groundhog's Gotta Say. It's time. There's his nose. Here he is. We'll see his shadow. Will he sh um, see his shadow? Yes, he does. But then we'll have six more weeks of winter. He's going to become a possible. He's going to get a fat head. He's great, huh? I want to be just like him. You think I'm just a groundhog. Nope, I'm also called a whistle pig. In danger, I whistle very loud and I go woof, and as woof, is o it's over. Danger, pass. He's trying to make us all think his, um, that his name is all about whistle and not about his pigginess. I can, I can think of a few other names they call him, like Mr. Fove himself. Hey, you're talking about my hero. And I even got a third name, oh, third name, Woodchuck. If only I had a dollar for every time someone asked, how much would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? The truth is, I'm not into chucking wood. I'm more interested in moving dirt. Lots of it. Maybe the poem should go, how much ground could a groundhog? I'm a digging machine. I can move about 700 pounds of dirt and rock in one day. And how about this? My ears don't even get dirty. I have ear flaps to keep them clean. Yeah, but look at the rest of us. Actually, groundhogs clean up nicely. We're very neat. I don't dig any which way. First I go down a few feet, then up a few feet, then down again, then up. that hump is my food hump bump, and it keeps the burrow from getting soaked in the storm. You see, groundhogs are always thinking. My burrow's popular, neighbors scoot in to avoid danger, some can't wait to move in when I move out. Look, indoor plumbing, that's classy. I told you we're tidy, well maybe you're not a hog. People everywhere love groundhogs. We're in the family of rodents called uh, marmots. So, the people who love us are called marmotphilias. Folks who study us are called marmoteers or marmorologists. I'm not a groundhogologist. Oh, people with too much time. I can think of a few folks who aren't fans of your so-called cousin over there. Right, remember the mess he made in Mr. Moody's garden? Gardens can be very excitable. You think I have to stay on the ground? Only if I, um, only if I want to. I can climb trees. And I can swim too. I don't love it like my cousin Beaver, but I can hoggy paddle. So now he's a tree hog too. But let's see him fly. Or hang upside down by the back toes from a bird feeder. Well, um, if this, if you must bring this up, okay, we're not quick as animals go, but we can run as fast as the average fourth grader. Seems to us that you're a bit slow on your feet, like a blimp with legs. Bet you can't sneak up on me. I'm very alert. That's how I deal with predators. My head is like a submarine periscope. My eyes and ears and nose are set up high so I can see what's around. Uh, snoot in the air is right, and if your head gets any bigger, you'll never get down in your hole. My nose is so terrific that I've got my own caller ID system. If you've been in my burrow for a visit, I'll know about it. He smells, he hears, he sees, he swims, he climbs trees. Anything else, Mr. Wonderful? Yes, I can live in all kinds of places. Fields, woods, thickets, rocky areas, or under sheds and porches. I'm not fussy. Same true. Um, same is true for eating. Not picky there either. I'll eat grass, dandelions, greens, clovers, grains, bark, insects, fruits, veggies, 
Yakety yak yak yak. My ears are tired. You must spend as much time chewing as talking. Speaking of eating, my chompers aren't just for chewing. My fabulous teeth even help me dig burrows. They, um, they're strong enough to gnaw through roots and move rocks. And I can chatter my teeth so loudly that my enemies turn and flee. Can you do that? Didn't think so. Well, I can do a lot more than that. I have special teeth that keep growing. Gnawing keeps them just the right length. Too long, like a, um, too long, like that beak of yours wouldn't be good. Hey, we squirrels have those kind of teeth too. Maybe we're really related. But how do we? Keep, how do you keep your teeth um, short during your long snooze? Hibernating, not snoozing. It's not the same as snoozing. There's more to it. Before the weather gets cold, we snack like mad and cover our bodies with fat. You mean pig out, whistle pig out. Shh, I want to hear about the teeth. I'm getting to that. When I'm ready to hibernate, I go down into my burrow and seal myself into the lower chamber so that no one will disturb me. In hibernation slumber, I barely breathe, only about once every six minutes and my heart beats only once every four or five minutes. Everything slows down. My teeth stop growing. That's amazing. It must be very dark and stuffy in there. You don't get hungry? Nope, my amazing body isn't doing anything except getting thinner. I barely even age. I'd like that. I'm tired of being called an old crow. So you wake up just to give us the weather report? Well, yes, but um, when the days are warmer, I also feel the need for sn a snack and a date with a mate. When I can find when I find a mate, I like um, we chuckle and chatter at each other, and we touch noses and rub cheeks. Aw, that's sweet. Very cute. Yuck, that's disgusting. I'm not only cute; I'm helpful. Scientists are trying to figure out if people could hibernate as groundhogs do. They study us to learn more about our body rhythms and cycles of animals, including people. Maybe one day folks will climb aboard a space vehicle, hibernate, and wake up on Mars. Wow, that would be something. I'd sign up for one of those trips. I hope there's food on Mars. Okay, cousin, I admit, you're pretty cool. Yeah, you've got a few talents. You're the hog. Operation Groundhog will start immediately. The world will know the hog truth. All right, that's the end of gr Groundhog's Gotta Say. Now we'll move on to Boo. Lance went to his father and said, this year I'm going to wear a mask. I'm going to paint, or I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm going to paint my face and make it very scary. That's nice, Lance said to um, said his father. It's a lot of work for me. You can, um, it's a lot less work for me. You go and paint your face. So Lance went up to the bathroom and painted worms coming out of his hair, ants crawling on his cheeks, and snakes coming out of his mouth, and then went downstairs and walked up behind his father and said, boo. His father uh, turned around and yelled, ah, not scary enough, said Lance. I want him to fall over. So Lance went back upstairs and painted green brains coming out of, his, um, out of the side of his head, one eye falling down his, over his face, orange goop coming out of his nose, and then went downstairs and walked up behind his father and said, Boo! His father yelled, Ah! and fell right over. Scary enough, said Lance. Then Lance put a pillowcase over his head, got another pillowcase for candy, and walked down the street. He went up to the house, knock, knock, knock. A big man opened the door and said, First kid for Halloween, so nice to see you. See a little kid for Halloween. Lance lifted up his pillowcase and said, Boo! The man yelled, Ah! and fell right over. But Lance wanted some, um, wanted some candy, so he said very softly, Trick or treat! Nothing happened. So a little louder, Trick or treat! Nothing happened. So Lance went inside and there was an, an enormous table full of candy. He put all the candy in the bag. Go thump. 
Then, even though his bag was very heavy, he walked down the street, went to another house. Knock, knock, knock. A lady opened up the door and said, first kid for Halloween. So nice to see a little kid for Halloween. Lance lifted up his pillowcase and said, boo. The lady yelled, ah, and fell right over. But Lance wanted some candy, so he said very softly, trick or treat. Nothing happened. He said a little louder, trick or treat. Nothing happened. So Lance went inside and there was an enormous table full of candy. He put it all in his bag. Thump. Then Lance went into the kitchen and opened up the refrigerator. He took out 10 boxes of ice cream, 10, 20 cans of ginger ale, 3 watermelons, 10 frozen pizzas, and a turkey. Lance dragged the pillowcase across the porch. He fell down the stairs and landed in the middle of the street. A police car came by. The policeman jumped out and looked at Lance and said, Kid, what's the matter with you? You can't sit in the middle of the street. Take your candy and go home. Look, said Lance, my bag is so heavy. I can't even move. I live right down the street. Please carry my bag home. Well, all right, said the policeman. I'll take your bag of candy to your house. Whoa, that's a heavy bag. The policeman said, dragging the bag down the street, put it on Lance's front porch, and said, kid, you must have gone to 2,000 houses to get that much candy. No, said Lance, just two. Wait a minute, said the policeman. How did you get so much candy in just two houses? Well, said Lance, my face is so scary. When people see it, they fall over and I take the candy in the house. Hmm, said the policeman. I'm a cop. You can't scare me. I want to see your face. Okay, said Lance. He lifted up his pillowcase and said, boo. The policeman said, oh, if you think I'm going to fall over just because of a face like that, you're wrong. I'm going... I'm going, I'm going to run away. And he jumped into his car and drove away really fast. Zoom. Then Lance went inside and started to eat his first chocolate bar. There was a knock at the door. Lance opened it and there's a teenager, the kind of kid who is much too old to go out for Halloween and still goes out anyways. The, he had a pillowcase on his head and a bag full of candy, much bigger than Lance's. You must have gone to 5,000 houses to get that much candy, said Lance. No, said the teenager, just five. How did you get so much candy at just five houses, said Lance. The teenager said, said, my face is so scary that when people see it, they fall over and I take all the candy in the house. Now I'm gonna scare you and take all the candy in your house. Maybe not, said Lance, I wanna see your face. Okay, said the teenager. He lifted up the pillowcase and said, boo. He had worms coming out of his hair, butterflies coming out of his nose, and ants coming out of his mouth. He was scary, but not nearly as scary as Lance. Nice try, said Lance. He lifted up his pillowcase. Boo! The teenager yelled, ah, dropped the bag of candy and ran in the street. Lance looked at the teenager's bag of candy and dragged it into the house. His candy lasted a long time. Every day, Lance ate as much as he could. He ate candy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He ate candy in the middle of the night, but his candy lasted until... next Halloween. All right, boys and girls. So those are the next two for our March Madness. Vote in the comment box on which one you want to go forward for the Elite Eight. Um, we'll then continue our voting. So I'm excited to see which ones get put forward.